Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Do you want to make your van look amazing with some wood cladding? Then you need to watch my YouTube videos on my YouTube channel where I'm going to show you how to do all of this and it's going to be amazing. Hi guys, welcome back to another video. On today's video I'm going to show you how to clad the back of your van. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a frame with some wooden battens and I'm going to use tongue and groove cladding wood to go over the top of this. So I've got these my battens which are pretty skinny which allows me to bend them to the van because obviously if you've got wood that's too strong and you're not going to be able to bend the battens then obviously you're not going to be able to get that curve of the walls which is fine if you want straight walls but obviously if you want to optimise the most amount of space you can get out of your van you want to have a bit of bend in the walls that you're cladding. So the wood I've gone to use for the battens is 12 12 mil by 32 mil, and I got that from Wix. And the first step I'm going to be doing is putting these battens onto the roof. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the width of the roof, cut the battens to the width that I need them, and then I'm going to screw them into the roof. And then after this, I'm then going to do the same process for the walls. So I'll probably do three battens, one at the back, one at the middle, and one at the front. And when that's done, I can then clad both side walls, and then I'll clad the roof. And after that, I'm then going to paint it white, so it just looks a lot nicer, and that'll be the cladding done. Actually, no, it won't be. So once I've painted it, I'm then gonna clad the back of these panels on these two doors and on the sliding doors as well. So I'm gonna use the plywood as a template and then clad over the top of it if I've got enough cladding left. If not, I'm gonna have to go buy some. <laughs> I've cut all the wood for the frame so as you can see here we've got a front section for the left side so we're gonna screw that in and bend it into position like that and then we've got the same for the back so that'll go there like that and again that'll bend in and we've got to really really bend that one in so I might have to cut it a little bit more just yet and then we've got sections like this to go onto the roof so that'll go up there and again it will screw and bend into the roof we've got one just here another one there but a third one here and then a fourth one along here and again we'll bend that up into position and then the same again we've got battens to go along the left side at the front and the back and then we've also got two bits spare so i'm undecided yet but i might have to put a third bit just on the edge there and hopefully i can give that a bit of a bend as well but obviously i don't want to lose too much room off here because as you can see if you put it there that's right at the edge and i want the cladding to be in the bottom here you know just off this bit really and come across here push all this in and come to this bit here. So once that's all screwed in, we'll get on with the cladding. So guys, to do the roof, I've got these easy drive self-tapping screws, which goes into metal. You can see that's what they look like. So I've got 25 mil, so that'll be enough to go through the wood and into the metal. So I'd recommend using these. It seems to be what everyone uses for tapping into the metal of the van. As you can see guys, I've got the two roof battens in and the battens down the side as well. The only bit I've got left to do is this button here at the back and the same again down at the front. So yeah, I think for this one, what I'm gonna do is, because I can't actually screw it in, I think I'm just gonna wedge it in and maybe glue it in just in the corner there. And then that should run at the same level as the other two. Yeah, and then that'll be all the framework done. And then I can move on to doing the cladding. As you can see guys, I've got the front baton on, the middle baton and the third baton. 
The last one I've got to do is just the back button. So I'm just going to show you how to do that one. So guys, for this last button, it's a bit of an issue because I'm trying to make all the buttons as flat as possible so that when I stick the cladding onto it, it doesn't have to bend, you know, unequally. So it's just nice and flat. So the back one at here, if I stuck it to this bit here, it'd be too low. And if I stuck it to this one here, it'd be too high. So where the button is here, it's a perfect height. But as you can see, it's on top of this coping instead of underneath like on this one. So what I'm going to have to do is wedge a piece of wood in here and then once the wood's wedged in, I can then screw through here onto this one and that'll ensure that all these battens are fairly level. I've seen other people glue it to the roof but I don't really know how level you get it. I feel like this is the best way to do it. So if you've got a caddy, you know, this is a really good way to make sure all your battens are level. So guys, I've finished doing the battens for the wooden frame and the next step is to add the cladding. So to do this next step, what you're going to need is your cladding, tape measure of course, and then I'm going to use no more nails to stick it on. And also another handy tool is this. I don't actually know what it's called. I'll find out and drop it in the description. Pretty much this is a tool so you can get around the curves. So for example, if you wanted to curve around this edge, you can just, you just push it on like this and then you lock it into place. And then as you see, you can then use that to draw on your wood and you've got the curvature so then you can cut a piece of wood and it will obviously match up that line. So that's really, really handy. So another way to do it, if you've got the old plywood panels, you can use them as a template. So you can put the cladding on top, obviously get the curves at the bottom here and around this bit. It's not gonna be perfect because obviously the plywood's a little bit smaller, but that's a good way to use a template and make it a lot easier and a lot quicker. So I'm gonna crack on with this and just film me as I'm doing it and then I'll stop at each stage and show you what I've done. easiest way to get the curve of the wall and all the little bits of plastic trim is to use the old plywood template. So that's what I'm going to do. If you're not doing that, obviously you can use the other tools I said, but doing it this way is going to be a lot quicker. See, I've done one wall of cladding. I haven't stuck this on, as you can see, it's a bit loose. So what I've done is I've just done it by eye, really. I haven't really used a template, I've just done it by eye with a pencil, cut that side up, and I haven't stuck it down so that if anything goes wrong, I can just take it off again. So the next step I now need to do is take all this off. I need to then add another batten in bits behind because I realise that when I'm doing it, it's actually quite weak. So I'm worried that if you lean against it, it might crack. But another batten down there, another batten on the other side. I'm going to add another bit of batten just at the ends here just so that, again, the cladding's got something to stick to at the front. And then I can sand all the bits of cladding and then start sticking it back on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to first do the roof, so now I've figured out how I'm doing it, get the roof done because I want to use long pieces of cladding for the roof. Then I can come back, do the sides, cut the other side, and then I can use all the leftover short bits like this on the two back doors and the two sliding doors because I really want to use long pieces for the sides of the roof so I don't have any joins and it'll obviously make it stronger. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, is that even gonna be that's gonna be too high for metal? To get around this little weird bit, this tool comes in really handy as you can see. I've measured like that, slot this in, so I can take that to the wood and draw around it. Roof is done! Yay!
done all the cladding, we've done the cladding on both walls and on the roof. The next step we've got to do is clad the panels that go back on these doors and the two sliding doors. And then what we're going to do is rebuild these wheel boxes so we can put them on and cover up the wheel arches. So to do the cladding for the two rear doors and the two sliding doors, we use the old panels from the ply lining kit. As you can see, we're laying down the ply lining kit on the floor and putting the tongue and groove cladding on top of this. We then mark round this to make sure it's exactly the same size. I then use the jigsaw to cut this to shape. So what I'm using is wood glue and to help it bond I put a few wood screws in. So I took one panel off at a time, put some wood glue down, put it back in, slot it together and added a few wood screws to really help it bond and make it secure. Once this was completed I then reattached the panel back onto the barn door using self-tapping screws. So first of all I drilled pilot holes for self-tapping screws that I then used to attach it back onto the door. Once I was sure that all the cladding was in the right position and measured up properly, I then took it off at a few planks at a time. I then spread wood glue onto the plywood and put each plank down one at a time, slung it into place as it was tongue and groove. I then used short wood screws to secure this in place. If you own a van you'll know that the side of the vans are curved, so as you put the plywood panel back in it has to bend into shape. So I wanted to make sure that it was nice and solid and nothing would pop off. Once the panel was complete, I then secured it back onto the sliding door using self-tapping screws. This is quite difficult as you have to hold the door slightly open while attaching it. So if I was you, I'd get someone to help you do this as it would make it a lot easier. I've decided to use the old wheel boxes instead of making new ones. This was just to save time and save on wood. I tidied up the old wheel boxes by sanding them down and getting some of the mastic off the edges. So if you watched our first video when we bought the van, you'll know that the ply lining kit had mastic all the way around the edges. So I'm just using a standing knife here to cut it all off and tidy it up. To reattach the wheel boxes, I didn't want to screw them into wheel arches because I was worried this would create a hole and could lead to rust and therefore damaging the van. So again, I used wood glue to secure the wheel boxes down in position. I used wood glue along the bottom of the wheel boxes and along the top edges. So this would secure it to the plywood floor and the cladding on the walls. I then placed weights on top of the wheel boxes and left it for 24 hours. Once the wheel box is set in place, I've got more tongue and groove cladding and covered them up. And as you can see, it looks amazing. The finish is really, really good. And I'm really, really proud of this bit. So guys, the cladding is done. We've still got a few tiny little bits to do just around the edges, just off the edges here, just to tidy it up. But the cladding is done. It took a lot longer than expected. When we tried to use the no nails, I think it's called, so we weren't gonna have any screws, it was just absolutely terrible. It didn't stick at all. It said it was meant to stick in five minutes and then after two hours it should be set and hold 50 kilograms. So we left it for an hour with loads of weights on and it all just came off. It's, it's awful, don't buy it. Um, I think Evo Stick is the one to buy if you want to do that, but no nails, terrible. So the no nails guys watching this, uh, you know, reach out and tell me why your product's so bad. Anyway, <laughs> cladding. We've cladded the back doors, we've done the sides, the roof, the sliding doors, and then we've done over the wheel box as well, which just looks so much better. It looks amazing. So now we're going to paint it white, so we're going to have the white and the grey. But yeah, it's a really long task in the cladding. It looks amazing, and I think you'll agree it does look amazing, but it takes a lot longer than you think. We've been super, super busy, so we've only been able to do like an hour in the evenings and the odd weekend here and there. So to do the cladding, it's probably taken us two or three weeks, but obviously if, if you actually did it, I'd say you probably need, you know, I would say you need at least like two full days, and that, you know, full days I'd say going from 8 a.m. in the morning to probably 6 o'clock at night. You know, if you get two full days, you can probably do it, and then obviously you've got to paint it as well. But it's a little fiddly bits, you know, around the wheel box and everything like that. That takes a while, but anyway, it looks great. Let's go on the painting.
So guys, the painting is complete and we're absolutely blown away. It looks so good. I wish I'd done this in my other van. It takes a huge amount of time, but the cladding just looks amazing. The white and the gray, the white paint against the gray carpet just looks so good. I mean, the cladding, just that effect. And then we haven't done a super thick coat, so you've got a bit of the grain of the wood coming through. We've got some little bits to finish off, but it looks amazing. So I hope this video has helped you out. If it has, please hit that subscribe button. Let's get to 10,000 subscribers. But the main point is, I hope this video has helped you guys out and it's helped your van projects come along. It'd be great to see what you guys are up to and what you're doing as well. So let me know in the comments. And like always, if you've got any questions or you get stuck, drop a question in the comments and we'll help you out. But yeah, we'll see you in the next video.